This is your daily reminder that male hygiene is super important and that you always need to be on top of it 24 seven. You never know when you're going to need it. It could be from a first date or a job interview. And I know what you're thinking. Vach, why do my man parts have to be clean for a first date and a job interview? Maybe you need more interesting first dates and job interviews. Manscaped. I just want to give a big shout to our new sponsor. Just like I said earlier, man, hygiene is super tricky nowadays. And who better than the leaders in below the belt male grooming Manscaped to help us deal with that problem. Grooming and hygiene is more than just a three hour ordeal. That's why the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0 comes with tools that help us stay fresh and clean all day. Like the Lawnmower 3.0, a waterproof cordless body trimmer that features a cutting edge ceramic blade that reduces grooming accidents thanks to advanced skin safe technology. Also in the perfect package, you get the Manscaped Crop Preserver, a ball deodorant that keeps you smelling majestic. With the purchase of the perfect package, you get two free gifts. One, a shared travel bag, which is valued at 39 bucks that you get for free, and the patented high performance reduced chafing Manscaped boxers that you can wear all day comfortably so not only do we want you to be on top of your hygiene but we also want you to save some money so for 20 percent off and free shipping go to manscaped.com make a purchase use the promo code vach v-o-c-h vach to get 20 percent off and free shipping at manscaped.com your balls will thank you Let's turn these breadcrumbs to a hedge fund. As Vach Lombardi, we're taking a look at JC Horn today. Um, if you wanted to see this earlier than you should have been in my Patreon back in December when we first dropped it, um, we dropped film early. We dropped more film. And, you know, we just dropped longer film. So uh, go over there and check out patreon.com slash Vach Lombardi and get my full catalog of stuff over there. Appreciate y'all for doing that. Let's talk about J.C. Horn today. Now, when we're talking about corners in this class in particular, it's really heavy at the top, in my opinion. And then it's really heavy in day two. So what we got to do to separate these guys, they're all good. They're all, you know, they all got size. They can run. They got relative length. What we got to do is we got to separate these guys with nuance and technique and intangible stuff, right? I think J.C. Horn has the nuance, technique, and intangible stuff that can really put him over the edge when we're talking about these guys, right? I'm not one of these people out here talking about, hey, you think we can get J.C. Horn at like 15 or something? I think J.C. Horn is like up there, up there with the rest of them. If you've been following me, then you know where I'm at on J.C. Horn. I'm not going to you know, tell y'all how to feel about him or whatnot. But let me just run this play, then we'll come back and talk about it. J.C. Horn down bottom. This is going to be, first of all, one of my favorite plays from J.C. Horn, and it's going to be a good identifying play to just kind of tell you the type of player that he is. Now, first uh, first problem here. Auburn thought it was a good idea to just throw the ball at J.C. Horn all day, just to, like, try him. Um, that wasn't the greatest idea in the world. Uh, Seth Williams got one big play on J.C. Horn early in the game, and I don't think J.C. liked how Seth got up and talk to him after he made that big play. I'm not going to show it here because the draft Illuminati, the YouTube Illuminati, they like to hit me for like showing big plays and stuff. So we're not going to show it, but you can look up Seth Williams, JC Horn, Auburn, South Carolina, big play. You can find it. But ever since that one play, Seth Williams was able to do nothing with JC Horn. Take a look at this play here. <clears throat> We already showed it. Let's kind of break it down a little bit. First of all, they're going to try JC, which ain't good for your health. JC is going to open up his hips to the outside. He's going to get his eyes in the backfield, showing that he has confidence playing playing deep like this. He has control. Then he's going to find the football in the air. He's going to find his receiver. Then he's going to find the football again. This is the impressive part. Now he's looking for the football over his left shoulder. But he has that natural football thing in him where he understands that he has to look over his opposite shoulder to make this play. So he does that. He flips his head and looks over his right right shoulder at that point then he naturally just makes this play on the football we talked about a cat a couple weeks ago we're not going to say his name necessarily but you could be super athlete but if you don't have control if you don't have patience some of that intangible dog in you if you ain't got ball skills then you're going to have a hard time in the league in situations like this right how many times have y'all seen aaron Rodgers just eat dudes up with like ball placement and just back shouldering and stuff like that it it, 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 it happens all the time but jc not only is he big long fast dude that can run but he has all this extra stuff in him that's really fun to watch. Plus, I don't think he likes Seth Williams for this game. So let's just keep watching some J.C. Horn film. He is a dog. He will compete. He will pop up on the left side of your screen and continue to beat the hell out of Seth Williams. It ain't fun. J.C. Horn down bottom. He is a dog and he will compete. 
You understand? Now, you kind of saw a little something in this that we're going to talk about a little bit later. We'll talk about it a little bit later. But just the the man coverability, the, the patience here, the physicality, the finishing on the end of the route. You can't not watch J.C. Horn film and not walk away thinking that this dude is incredible and this dude is in one of the top of the top corners in this draft. I mean, it's just so natural for him. It's just so fluent. So it, it looks like he's been playing cornerback for 30 years. I and mean, he's not that old. But just just, just look at your guy, man. What are we doing? J.C. Horn up top. And I'm just, just saying this to let y'all know that the dude that he's, that he's going up against, Seth Williams, Seth Williams ain't no scrub. Like, he ain't like – you know he ain't like Jamar Chase or nothing, but he ain't no scrub. Like he 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 is an NFL talent. He's coming out in the draft this year. Like J C Horn beat up on. He took it personal. I think that's the biggest takeaway from this game today, right? J C Horn took all this stuff personal, and he beat the hell out of Seth Williams. J C Horn down bottom. It's the last one, terrorizing Seth Williams. You know what I'm saying? Just 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 making it a very uncomfortable day in man coverage for him. Okay, I know I said the last play was going to be the last play, but but look, J.C. Horn up top versus Seth Williams, dog. I, it, it's just so incredible how competitive J.C. got after that little bit of trash talk, right? After that one big play Seth Williams had, J.C. just took it so personal. And in front of this dude, mama and his family and his friends, he just terrorizing this dude. It was lovely to watch. So now take a look at where J.C. Horns lined up right here now, right? So I think that he followed this one receiver from Vanderbilt around. It's probably their best guy, I'm assuming. Like he followed them around or whatever. So if you get J.C. JC in the league, then I'm assuming he's going to be a guy that's going to follow the best receiver. I like it. That just means J.C. can play inside and outside. But you get the same results from him, right? And plus, something else I think is important too, I think nickel corners need to get bigger because slot receivers are getting bigger. We're going to have that conversation one day. But first of all, J.C. Horn can, can play outside. I just don't want y'all to like mix my words up. J.C. Is a, is a number one corner. In my opinion, I just think he can play everywhere if he had to follow somebody. Let me just clear that up. But J.C. Horn, whether he's playing outside or inside, he's going to be terrorizing people from whatever spot he ends up playing at. Good coverage. Here's another example. So we got one more play here. Uh, J.C. Horn following around Buddy with the long dreads. I will stop and Google his name, but we ain't watching film on you, dog. So <laughs> wait your turn. But we're going to watch J.C. Horn here. And uh, I think J.C. is going to be a really good goal line corner um, because his physicality, his competitiveness, and the fact that he has ball skills, right? Those are the three things that you need to win one-on-one -on -one situations like this, especially one-on-one -on -one situations, you know, in the, um, in, the, in the goal line versus big receivers. Being a big corner like this, it just gives a little more versatility to uh, J.C. Horn. Something else I like too. Watch this punch here. Boom, 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 boom. I love these long arms, though. You see what I'm saying? I love these. I love the length of his arms. Then he's gonna get into his uh, get into his coverage right here. Just, 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 just good stuff, man. Good stuff. Let's take a look at this uh, J.C. down bottom. I know people were waiting on me to address this part of the film session. I was just waiting uh, till the end uh, before I really got a, got a uh, chance to do it there. I know y'all saw it earlier. Look at that. Look at this mess. Uh, y'all uh, saw it in the uh, in the uh, film earlier, but uh, it's 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 going to be a lot of laundry or just rather at this point in his career it was a lot of laundry right just a lot of, you know they they like to get him for being grabby I, you know what to, to be fair he's a he's a physical dude man and in the league everybody's grabby everybody's gonna hold you at some point it's just that can you learn how to hide it can you learn how to how to harness that grabby type physicality when you're uh you know when you dealing in and out of these routes here uh so if anybody has a gripe about jc horn is going to be grabbiness Here's another example of him. He's uh, covering Kyle Pitts here, actually, which is which is which gives you more indication that he's probably just gonna follow around the best guys on the team. Um, you know, here's another situation. Just him kind of getting his hands there. Just you know, just just you know, pretty grabby there. Good positioning, good coverage. He just gets hands wrapped around people, right? So here's my whole thing, right? Am I willing to drop a round grade on J.C. Horn because he's grabby? No. Because I learned a long time ago from this old man named Ephraim. Shouts out to him. And he always said, Vach, don't sweat the small stuff. You know what I mean? Impactful words. Don't sweat the small stuff. And what that translates to is you can get mad at J.C. Horn for being grabby. But let me ask you this. Would you not draft Miles Garrett if he keep jumping off sides? What would you do? 
you would look at Miles Garrett and you'll be like, you know what? Miles Garrett is a stud. He just keep jumping off sides. Let me fix him jumping off sides and we'll be good to go, right? So if you're dealing with JC Horn, fix Grabby. In my mind, that's all you gotta do because you could draft the corner that covers worse than him. He may not get as many penalties, but he's worse than him. Now you're drafting backwards. You're hustling backwards. Uh, is that really what you want to do? I know JC Horn is a grabby individual, but he can cover his ass off. And he got great ball skills and he's super competitive. Great size, all the intangible stuff. What's the problem though, Vach? He's grabby. Okay, cool. Well, let's fix grabby and, and, and let's just go from there. <laughs> he, let's fix grabby and let's go from there. If you watching Pat Mahomes, you're like, well, Pat, well, Pat Mahomes got, got bad mechanics. Sure. He got bad mechanics. Tell him, put his foot right there. Draft Pat Mahomes, move on with your life. You see what I'm saying? JC, um, JC's got things to fix, but like Jamar Chase got things to fix. Zach Wilson has things to fix. Panay Sewell, right? Panay Sewell, Michael Parsons, no matter what player in the draft you like, they all have things to fix. So my thing about JC Horn is why would he drop down your rankings just because he got things to fix just like everybody else? Vosh says this, you take that dude and you just, you just deal with it. You deal with the bad side of him. He's not going to be grabby forever because grabby is something that you grow out of. You know, you just got to play more football to work out of that grabbiness. You know what I'm saying? But all the other stuff, pfft, a one day one to me, dog. So I ain't gonna hold y'all too too long. I just wanted to give y'all my thoughts on on uh, J C Horn show a handful of film and of and of course address the whole grabby notion that I think is 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 pretty nonsensical. It's a thing. I'm not gonna act like it's not a thing. But uh, to to not think that highly of J C Horn because oh I won't draft J C Horn because he's grabby. Well if I had to draft a team and you had to draft a team, my team would beat your team. I may get six penalties, <laughs> but your wide receiver one ain't gonna make no catches. You know what I mean? That's just how I feel. Hey man, uh, appreciate y'all for tuning in. Like this video, hit the sub button. We're gonna be doing a three day draft show uh, for the three days of the draft. So while that's going on, come over here, get my live reaction and analysis, mute the television because they ain't gonna do nothing but talk some nonsense um you know but you can you know look at tv and just hear me talk you know what i mean and tune into my reactions and all that good stuff follow me on twitter also v-o-c-h-l-o-n-b-a-r-d-i mm -hmm. y'all hold it down for the doski woski man don't forget about the patreon as well and shots out the manscape for holding down the channel being a sponsor they're also going to sponsor the uh the three-day draft show so shots out to them for being friends of the channel now i'm leaving peace mm -hmm.